In last week's video, we talked about a really awesome plugin for OctoPrint called the Spaghetti Detective. Now, this plugin uses your webcam and OctoPrint to monitor your 3D printer in real time. And if it detects that there is a failure, the goal is to have it pause your print, send you an email or a text message saying, hey, something's going on with your print. You can then check and see, oh yes, it's failing, stop the print, or no, it's fine, just go ahead and continue the print. And one of the scenarios where I thought that this would be incredibly useful would be in batch 3D printing. Now, batch 3D printing, in my opinion, really is anytime you're printing out more than one part, but certainly for printing out more than two or three parts, let's say four, that's considered batch printing. And that is typically the most common scenario where I see things going wrong. Sure, you can get a printer to print out one part, but once you try to print out multiple parts, especially covering your whole build plate, more often than not, there is something that goes wrong with one of those parts. And when that happens, you not only lose that part, but typically you lose your whole batch of parts because it'll cause filament to then string down and kind of get all over things, or that part might bump your other parts, but either way, it is not good. And one of the reasons why I try to avoid batch printing in most circumstances. Well, I recently discovered something in Cura that is pretty awesome, and it allows you to have Cura print out one part completely, and then move on to the next part and print that, art, that part out completely, and so on and so forth. So instead of having it where it prints out one layer at a time on all the parts and keeps going until all the parts are completed, it finishes one part, moves on to the next part, finishes that part, and so on and so forth. Now, this is not a new feature, and when I looked into Cura's history, it looked like it was released sometime around 2018, but I had never heard of it before, and I figured because I hadn't heard of it before, I'm sure there's other people out there that maybe are not aware that this exists. So in today's video, we are going to take a look at, in batch printing in Cura, what it looks like to print all the things at a time versus printing one thing at a time, and the pros and cons of each of these uh, different methods, as well as, of course, in Cura, how to set this up for yourself. So I hope you guys are excited, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So just about every 3D printer slicer that I've used has it where if you drag in 10 parts, it's gonna slice those 10 parts and it's going to print them all out at the same time. So when the final part is complete, it's done them all one layer at a time together. So one layer of them all, second layer of them all, third layer of them all, and so on and so forth for you know how many hundreds of layers there are. And the reason why this is a standard is because in most situations, it really makes the most sense. But there are situations where you are batch printing and perhaps your printer doesn't have the best adhesion. Perhaps your, uh, your bed is a bed that's warped or you are printing with a material like ABS or like a polycarbonate that is known to warp or you're printing with a material that's incredibly stringy. Well, in some of these situations, if you try to do a full batch of prints, you're almost asking for failure. Your, your chances of success are very low. And again, like I mentioned previously, if you have one object that comes off the build plate, chances are you're losing your entire batch. So in those circumstances that I just described where there are issues with the printer or a material that's quite difficult, that's when printing one at a time kind of starts to make a lot more sense. Because in those instances, let's say you're printing out four parts and the first part's good, the second part's good, the third part's good, completed, final part decides to fail on you or something like that, well, that's fine. I mean, it sucks, but you've at least got three parts that are completed. So your three fourths of your yield is is fine. While again, in the other situation, if you were printing all three at the same time, the fourth one starts to do some funky stuff. Well, you have to then decide, is it worth having filament stringing all over and potentially making the other parts not as good? Or do you kill the print and start all over? So it can waste a lot of time. It can waste uh, cost. It can waste filament. So again, in those situations is when this really makes a lot of sense. So before we dive in a bit more into the pros and cons of both of these methods, let's go ahead and go over to Cura so I can show you guys how to activate this if you want to test it out for yourself. So in Cura, we're going to go over to the menu on the right hand side that has all of your slicer settings and we're going to click on the little hamburger menu. There's an option that pops up that says manage setting visibility and when we click on that it's going to bring up the window that has all of the many hundreds of options that Cura has hidden by default. If you type print sequence into the search bar it will bring up the option under special modes and when you click the checkbox on the left side it will then be added to your slicer options. Now under the printing sequence it will allow you to change the value from all at once or one at a time. So now that we've activated it let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of both and how to work with the limitations printing one at a time comes with. So for the standard 3D printing method where you're printing out all the parts at the same time, 
One benefit of that is for cooling. So for example, let's say you're printing with PLA and you're printing some kind of like a small tower. Let's just say like uh, Chep has his little pond that he prints out. Well, if you're printing out just that pond by itself and it's a pretty small print, well, it doesn't get a chance to cool down between each layer, which could actually have an effect on the overall look of the part or the, the part's quality. So when you're printing them all at the same time and it does one layer, then goes to the next part, does one layer, then goes to the next part and does the next layer, by the time it's made its way around, that part has had enough time to adequately cool and become solid before that next layer is laid down on top of it. So that's a huge plus. A second plus, which is the biggest plus I would say, and the reason why it's the primary method that's used, is that it allows you to print your entire build volume at the same time. So if you can fit it on your build plate and your build plate's got proper adhesion, then you can, you can print the entire build plate because of the fact that it's doing one layer at a time, the head of the machine doesn't have to worry about bumping into parts, it doesn't have to worry about constriction. So a huge benefit of using your whole build plate or, or printing the entire build plate at a time is again that you actually are able to use your entire build plate. We already discussed really the only negative that I can think of which is that if you do lose one part you risk losing your entire batch or potentially damaging something on your printer. So that is really the main uh, disadvantage of using that method versus the one at a time. So as for the printing one at a time, we kind of already covered the main incentive, but the main thing is, is that if you lose a print or if you lose a part, you're never really losing an entire batch. So whether you're printing three parts or eight parts, whatever part it decides to fail on, you've already got whatever parts have completed prior to that part, which is a huge plus. The other benefit is that there's less traveling. So on the method where you're printing all the parts at the same time, on each layer, the head has to finish that layer, then travel to the next part, do that layer, then travel to the next part, vice versa the whole entire time around. So there's lots of traveling going on. While when it's printing just one part at a time, it's just printing out that part, printing out that part, printing out that part, now it's traveling to the next one, printing out that part, printing out that part. There's a lot less traveling between each object and it might not be substantial, but it definitely can increase the print time by having to have it travel back and forth between all your parts if you're printing out a large batch. Okay, so now that we've talked about the benefits of printing one part at a time, there are definitely some serious limitations, which is the main reason I would say this isn't a standard for how we print things. So the first issue is the gantry. So the gantry that your hot end slides on, on a Prusa style machine or like an Ender 3 style machine, that rides back and forth on your X axis. So each part, let's say you're printing out a part, and you want to print a part to the left or the right of that part and you want to do the one at a time. So finish this part, let's move to the left and print another one of those parts. Well, an issue that you run into is that the parts cannot be taller than what that arm is of your gantry. So let's say you have an inch and a half between the nozzle and where the actual gantry starts. Well, that's the amount of space you have to work with because if the part's taller than that, when the head goes back down to print the second part, it's going to whack your initial part. So one way you can get around that is instead of printing parts side by side where the bar is on like an Ender or a Prusa style machine, you can print parts behind each other or in front of each other. So obviously depending on the type of machine you have, like whether it's a Core XY where it's got the X and the Y um, both riding back and forth on that rail, then you can't do front and back and you're truly limited to the nozzle, from the nozzle to the gantry. On a machine like an Ender 3, you can actually print a pretty tall part in the back and then just have it print the next part in front of it because it doesn't have to worry about that X arm since it's never gonna cross over your part. So that is one thing and that is the main thing really is that you are limited pretty heavily by the height of your gantry. So if you wanna make sure that you're playing it safe, you can get the value of this by just measuring from the tip of your nozzle to the base of your gantry. So on the Ender 3, the aluminum, um, I measured my AM8 for the sake of this and it had roughly 35 millimeters. So I entered that into the gantry height under machine settings in Cura. So aside from height, the other thing we do need to take into consideration is actually the size of the hot end. So if we're printing out a part, let's say we're not doing side by side and we're doing in front of and behind because we want to be able to print taller. Well, the hot end still has to go around and print the part and the filament might come out of a small nozzle, but your hot end probably has cooling fans and a BL touch. And so you need to make sure that hot end has enough movement to be able to print out your part and not bump the part that's behind it or bump the part that's in front of it. And so with this, you can do some basic measurements of just what the length and width is of your hot end and make sure that if you're printing out one part, you space the next part so it's at least that distance away. So if the nozzle is at the farthest point of this part you're printing, you know that it's not hitting the next part over. It sounds 
It sounds a lot more complicated when I say it out loud, but hopefully by like a visual representation, it'll help to really explain this. But those are your main limitations is the height as well as the length and width or the, the left and right of your hot end, making sure it's not gonna bump the part next to it. This is why something like a belt printer works perfect for this because it just prints its part in place and then it kicks that part out of the way completely and can print the next part. So that is a major reason why for people that are wanting to do batch printing, like the new Creality belt printer or the CR30, I think is, is what it's called, is such an enticing thing. You don't have to worry about these limitations. Now, I'm definitely not saying that this method is superior to printing all at the same time because I don't think that it is. But there are definitely situations where I think that this method can be very, very useful. For example, a while back I was printing out these nylon cable chains for my K40 laser to basically take my little air assist tube through. And when I was printing them, I could print out maybe one or two or three at a time. But anytime I went more than that, one of the little cable chains, which is nylon, which again is difficult with adhesion, would come off and it would cause me to lose a batch. I would lose, I think each batch of four took like an hour to an hour and a half. They're pretty small cable chains, but it still sucked. And so in that instance, I could have had it set up like this where again, those parts are pretty small. I think they were maybe half inch to three quarters of an inch. So in that instance, I don't need to worry about the height of the gantry because there's no way it's gonna hit it. So all I had to do was space them out and I could have made sure that, hey, each batch of four, if three of them complete and the fourth fails, well, great, I've still got a 75% yield. So it's situations like that where this is really useful and I don't plan on using this for a huge amount of my prints. I usually print one part at a time, but if I'm printing small parts in batches, you better believe that this is at least something that I'm going to be thinking of as a, okay, does it make sense to print them all at one time or do I have the clearance and the distance that I only need to print out you know, six of them so I can space them out accordingly? So. Just like when we discussed the ability to use tree supports, it's not necessarily about, oh, I know this now and I've got to use it, but it's just having that tool in your bag of slicing tricks so that way you know if you're running into issues, well, can I use tree supports? Well, can I use printing at you know in sequence or one at a time? Like, what's the best method? So my goal with this is really to just educate you on the amount of options that are out there in the slicer that a lot of people probably don't know about. Out of curiosity, because I wasn't aware of this, let me know in the comments down below how many of you knew that this was already a function that existed, and if you've used it, what your experience has been like, and if you do end up trying it out after watching this video, please let me know how that goes. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. This year I've made a video every single Saturday, which is absolutely insane. Huge thank you to all of you guys that keep coming back and supporting the channel. And uh, if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description to where you can find me over on Patreon. Uh, thank you to all of my Patreon supporters that allow me to spend time doing, more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot and I'm out. Peace guys.